Let's take a closer look at the probably most unusual and most innovative car Le Mans has ever seen. The Nissan Zeot RC. Zeot means zero emissions on demand race car. In my other video, you learned everything about Ben Bobai's Delta Wing design, which was revolutionary, started as a single seater future IndyCar project, and used a double seater chassis of the failed Aston Martin Pro Drive Le Mans project. So, it was a project of Dan Gurney's All American Racers as constructor of Bobai's design, Highcroft Racing as race team, and Don Panos as managing partner. Later, Chip Genesi sponsored the project and Nissan provided the four-cylinder engine and secured the naming rights. So, in 2012, they competed in the 24 Hours of Le Mans in the experimental Garage 56, which doesn't have to comply with the usual regulations. Unfortunately, the car has been taken out during the race, but showed some good performance up until this point. Now, in the background, the structure changed. Bobai was now employed by Nissan, Nissan stopped the partnership and Don Panos entered the Delta Wing in the American Le Mans series, now with a 1.9 liter Mazda engine. Nissan and Bobai, however, had a different plan. They wanted to compete in Le Mans again and develop the concept further. So at Le Mans 2013, it was announced that Nissan was granted the place for the Garage 56 in Le Mans 2014 with a hybrid Delta Wing. Since Don Panos was running the original Delta Wing design in the US with the financial backing of Chip Genesi, both were suing Nissan and Bobai for the use of intellectual property, and a lawsuit unfolded in the background. Nissan and Bobai continued anyway and teamed up with RML in the UK. They designed and built the car within seven months. They used the same general concept, but it was a completely new car. Instead of the old open Aston Martin chassis, they developed a brand new bespoke closed monocoque for the Zeot, which complied with the new 2014 LMP1 chassis regulations. Requirement of the ACO for Nissan to get the Garage 56 place was that the car would be able to run 13 Le Mans laps with combustion engine and drive the 14th lap fully electrically in less than 4 minutes, as well as driving electrically through the pit lane. In order to achieve this, Bobai had to fine-tune the concept to maximum efficiency, even more than before. So, they used the efficient low-drag delta wing design, now with a closed cockpit for even less drag. They then developed a new 1.5-liter three-cylinder turbo petrol engine with direct injection, which only had a weight of 40 kg and produced 400 horsepower. Turbo and exhaust added another 6 kg. The previous four-cylinder engine had only 300 horsepower and a weight of 90 kg. RML even chose electronic components from suppliers by their weight. They then mounted the new three-cylinder engine transversely instead of longitudinally like before. They spent three days to get the weight of the cylinder head below 7 kg. They used a hollow crankshaft with aluminium plugs to save weight. And they reduced the cooling system to a minimum to keep water volume and hence weight down. In the end, they used two radiators, one behind each rear wheel with an air intake above the wheel arch, so they can use the low pressure behind the wheel for a good exit and less wake, so a very efficient concept. To save weight, the left-hand side radiator cooled combustion engine and electric drivetrain. The right-hand side radiator cooled battery, gearbox and water-cooled intercooler. The tricky thing here were the different target temperatures in the left-hand side system, with the target being 80 degrees Celsius for the combustion engine and 50 degrees Celsius for the electric drivetrain. So it meant that before starting the three-cylinder engine, it had to be heated up while driving. And after switching it off, it had to be cooled down while keeping the system at 50 degrees C for the electric drivetrain. And all that with just the left-hand side radiator. The packaging was super tight and a huge challenge. You can see this special transversal gearbox here with the rear diff being between turbo and the two electric motors with 110 kilowatt each hanging at the back. So special heat shields were crucial for this concept to work. The engine was inclined by 5 degrees to make space for the intake manifold. Another problem was that because they used the three cylinder engine and because it was so light, there was little inertia and hence massive vibrations, which is a big risk for every race car. 
So the lithium ion high voltage battery with 12.4 kilowatt hours was sitting within the tub, surrounded by the fuel tank and fixed with a special soft suspension to avoid any issues. The car does not have a starter and instead the two electric motors can start the engine. There is a new front suspension, no power steering and no clutch pedal for the driver. The drivetrain control was so complex that the electronics controlled the clutch for the driver. But not just that, the Ziot also had a sophisticated brake-by-wire system, which in 2014 was big news and at the time many F1 teams had problems with that. It meant that the brake pedal and brake force was always the same for the driver, but the electronics decided how much recuperation and how much mechanical brake was used, based on the state of charge and battery temperatures. In terms of aerodynamics, the Ziot had a lift to drag ratio of 6 and produced more downforce than his own weight, even without having any wings. That was possible because the car only had a weight of around 600 kg. In terms of aerodynamics, they used the smallest possible frontal area and instead of a wing, the Ziot had a retractable rear gurney, similar to a LaFerrari, which gave it minimum frontal area on the straights but enough downforce in the corners and under braking. The small side inlets collected air for engine and rear brake cooling. The project was a big success at first. The car was done in time, could do some testing and the Ziot could keep its promises in Le Mans. They reached 300 km per hour electrically on the straights on first day and were the first to complete a lap fully electric. And it was the first car without conventional mirrors in Le Mans. RML, Bobai and Nissan already knew the concept and concentrated on the complex parts for this new car. And all of the complex parts worked flawlessly. But unfortunately, in the race, they had to retire after just 5 laps and 23 minutes. The reason was a gearbox failure, a pretty conventional part compared to all the high-tech in this car. But the Ziot pushed the Delta Wing concept a lot further and broke new ground. In the background, Nissan already prepared their LMP1 entry for 2015 with the unusual front wheel driven LM Nismo, of course also designed by Bolby, about which you can learn everything in my other video. The lawsuit with Genesi and Panos was settled outside of the court two years later in 2016 under undisclosed conditions. Let me know how you like the unusual Nissan Le Mans concepts and check out my other videos for more.